Hello, this is Mitch Montgomery. Uh, I'm an agronomist with Golden Harvest here in, in Northwest Iowa. And today I'm with Dan Shea, a sales rep uh, here in, in North Central Iowa. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the rootworm feeding issues we're seeing in 2021 on corn on corn. As you can see, we're in a field that's got some tremendous feeding, um, both in the larval stage on the roots, as well as silt clipping affecting pollination on the uh, as we go into ear set. Um, so this has been a, a huge issue this year, uh, we've seen it in the past as well, but a lot of discussion about it in in uh, 2021. Yeah, and, and one of the hot topics that we continue to hear about is trait performance. And, you know, we have some trait uh, issues going on in some spots and not in the other spots and across different brands and so forth. But, you know, where, what's your thoughts moving forward with trait performance and what we're seeing this year and what does that mean moving forward? So we have a, a lot of reasons why we see issues from year to year. Um, uh, 2021, the biggest issue we have is uh, really we're coming off of a year in 2020 where we had a lot of concentration of adults. And we had a lot of the adults moving in 2020 to the healthy parts of the field to complete their life cycle, lay eggs uh, in, in those parts of the field. Combine that with 2021 continued drought stress and we have a lot of early season stress and vegetative stress that affect the root growth. Anytime you have a stress on a plant, whether that's too much, too much water, too little water, in this case, too little water, uh, drought stress affecting root growth, the BT protein is going to be expressed in those roots. So if you have something that affects root development, you're going to have a decreased expression of the protein. So a lot of things combined to give us the issue we have this year. But the main thing is you have a concentrated feeding on a root system that is not developed properly and you have huge numbers of rootworm larvae that are overcoming a poor root system with lower than lower than normal BT trade expression. Makes sense. And we're seeing a lot of differences out there, um, but not a common theme of one thing standing out above other. Uh, we just see these heavy pockets and and starting to see it in, in more concerning of three years, third year corn on corn, not just your long-term corn on corn, seeing different management things that um, are showing issues as well. And so you know, moving forward, Mitch, what, what, what is your takeaway on traits and how, how do we move into um, selecting traits? Do we, do we base it off of just that or, or what's your thoughts moving forward there? Well, Dan, as you know, we have been in multiple fields, multiple traits. So we've we've been with really every marketable trait that's or been in fields with every marketable trait, showing high levels levels of pressure and high feeding. Um, to me, that's the issue. Is we do a really good job of placing traits in the market, but under certain stress conditions and under high pressure situations, traits alone aren't going to solve this problem. Uh, corn rootworm uh, will overcome. Uh, whether it's stress driven or population driven, we will see uh, chinks in the armor of, of any trait we're throwing at it. So as we manage rootworm, we need to do that in a, in a multifaceted approach. We need to look at traits, yes. We need to look at crop rotation. We need to implement adult control strategies, soil applied insecticides, anything to develop a comprehensive strategy, not just, hey, let's put traits on the field. We need to focus on everything that's happening field by field, understand your populations with sticky traps, know what your history of rotation was, your history of your population, as well as your direction going forward. Does that field need to be corn on corn? Does it need to be continuous corn for another three or four years? Um, and then really, how do we manage that field with a planned approach, incorporating traits as one of the strategies and one of the management tactics in addition to the others? Hi, Dan Shea here, sales rep. Uh, for Golden Harvest in Central Iowa here with Dr. Deanne Jorgensen here talking about corn rootworm management. Specifically, we're looking at Western corn rootworm today. We're in a field here in Central Iowa that uh, has extreme pressures, see heavy feeding, um, a lot of lodging going on, and just kind of want to have a general conversation of, of what this life cycle looks like and, and what are some things we need to be looking at as we look in management. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me today, Dan. You know, Western corn rootworm or Northern corn rootworm for that matter are really interesting beetles from the standpoint that, you know, every year is one generation. So, you know, early in the spring around that V2 corn time frame after planting when the corn comes up is typically when you would see egg hatch. And then those eggs will uh, find a corn root 
They will burrow into that corn root. They don't bite on it like, um, you know, you would eat a carrot. They actually go in between. So if you imagine my fingernail is the root sheath and my finger is the root itself, they go in between the root sheath and the root and feed, right? So they kind of go inside of that root and they'll feed and they go through three larval molts or immature stage changes, right? So they molt three times and then they come out of that root and will pupate in the soil. So they come out of the root, find a place to pupate, and then they will go through their pupation cycle. And then you typically see the adults come out. Um, often it's males first and then females. And you'll see them come out around that tasseling time frame. So about that R1 time frame, you begin to see emergence. Sometimes it can be a little earlier. Sometimes it can be a little bit later. It just depends. But on average, you'll see those adults come out around tasseling and then they mate and then they begin feeding. And not only are the larvae, the larval stage, the immature stage, like that worm stage damaging the corn, the adult stage does as well because they feed on the silks and they can reduce the nick, right? So they can reduce the pollen falling onto those uh, pollen tubes and fertilizing that ear, right? So they'll, they're, the adults are known as silk clippers, much like Japanese beetle and other types of uh, nitidulid beetles will also feed on silks, um, corn flea beetles. Um, so all of these silk clippers can have de deleterious effects to, you know, that whole kernel fill on the cob. And, um, you know, those adults then will lay eggs. Those females will find a spot, she'll lay eggs in the soil, um, and those eggs will then overwinter. So that's the general life cycle. And, you know, one of the a couple of management tactics that we really need to be aware of when we're dealing with corn rootworm, either northern corn rootworm or western corn rootworm, is that we have to employ multiple management techniques to deal with this insect pest. It can't just be one thing. It can't just be traits. It can't just be a soil applied insecticide. It can't just be going out and, uh, you know, putting in a, a foliar insecticide on the adults. It's got to be lots of management tactics. In your opinion, what, you know, what do you see in your particular area that's been the most efficacious? Oh, 100%. I think one thing that uh, we struggle with out here is just the implementation and wanting to do what's easy, right? We'll maybe switch a trait or add insecticide or, or do a better job of beetle bombing. And in some cases, um, we're still getting fed through, right? We're, yeah. That's still not enough. And, and at the end of the day too, we have to be really conscious about where our dollar is going and making sure we get a return on that investment. And so, you know, one thing that, that we hear a lot is, well, I'm just going to throw insecticide at everything. I'm going to throw a trait at everything. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And in some cases, uh, in, in all reality, what we need to do is do a better understanding field by field of what populations look like, what history has gone into it, and, and fully make decisions based off that, not just what the easy button is. I think we've got a, a long ways to go in understanding how to manage these things because it seems like whatever we do, they find a way around it or mother nature helps them out, right? And so we just need to take another next level of management, understanding populations with sticky traps, controlling adults more, using soil applied insecticides and those types of things. And if we can do that, um, I think we're gonna have a pretty good chance at, at yeah. controlling these things. Yeah, 100%, I would agree with that entirely. Corn rootworm are a pest insect that you see really intensely for a few years and then a little bit less intensely in some cases. So it almost seems like the populations ebb and flow and that could be from a variety of reasons. It also could be just the dynamics of how insect populations function in the world, right? So just depending upon how many insects there are, how much competition there is in the field, then um, how those insects are interacting with, with each other. And then also how there are um, the mitigation uh, techniques that we might apply. So you'll see the populations ebb and flow and that's a natural cycle. So one of the things that we see or what I hear all the time is, well, we had corn rootworm really bad in this field for a few years on continuous corn and then they just seem to have kind of gone away. But guess what, they'll always come back. Yeah. So that's the thing about Western corn rootworm or Northern corn rootworm for that matter. We've got to stay a year ahead of our management strategy as well as always be planning ahead in front of them because they are never going to go away. I'm sorry to tell you that. They're always going to be here. <clears throat> More lovely days like this <laughs> walking in the middle of a field. Could it be hotter? Not, maybe a hair, <laughs> but I don't think so. Well, hey, thanks for having me yes. out here today. Thank I really you, appreciate Deanne. it. Appreciate it.